For Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen here with Shannon Morris and a very special guest. It is none other than Dark Tangent himself. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Hey, I'm excited to be here. I've watched <laughs> your show for eons and we've never actually met. I, I can't believe it's been 30 DEF CONs and that hasn't happened. No, no, but I, I feel like I know you through your YouTube, but I definitely know Shannon. Yeah, we actually did a panel the other day. It was the DEF CON 101 panel. Thank you so much for the kind introduction and yeah. it was great to finally meet you in person. Yeah, it feels like, I think with COVID, I didn't realize when I got to DEF CON, like a weight lifted off my shoulders. Yeah. That I didn't realize she was there. And as soon as I got around like my people, yes, it was like, Wow, I didn't realize that that personal contact yes. is just we are such social creatures. I, I had the same feeling. I'm definitely an extrovert. I know I'm the weirdo being here. I'm the extroverted one. But it was so interesting coming back to DEF CON 30 after being away for such a long time. I actually saw some of my friends in person and I started bawling my eyes out. And I didn't realize you didn't how know much that I, you had that. I didn't realize I missed them so much until I came back. And I feel like that's one of the important roles that DEF CON plays in our lives as hackers and as information security experts, we're, we're kind of a, more than a community in a sense. Yeah. Many of which came to my wedding. Like, we're a family. It's a weirdo family. It is a weirdo family. I think maybe that's a difference though between sort of the hacking culture and the infosec culture yes. a little bit, where infosec sometimes can become kind of transactional career advancement. And with DEF CON or with hacking conferences, it's a little less about career advancement and more about learning the thing, do the thing. I agree, and yeah. And I think that's maybe a different mentality. Yeah, the getting into the scene early on, that was the uh, one of the biggest draws for me, and I would love to hear your personal story on this, but the thing that I found as a kid on IRC in the 90s was that finally there was a place where I felt like I belonged. Yeah. And there's been this sense of community that even, you know, now 20, 30 years into it, uh, you really still have that kind of family feel mm -hmm. of like this is where your your brothers and sisters are yeah. and uh, I'm curious to hear from you because I mean obviously doing so much to shepherd the community how that was like before there was a DEF CON for you yeah well so in the lore of DEF CON um, <laughs> there are all the hacking conferences before me there's about three or four there's like summer con and ho ho yeah. con and pump con was just starting basically the same year and they're all invite only and I was young and new, and I didn't have the invites. So when I did DEF CON, I wanted to make it open, not closed. But that's the fork in the road. If you become open, you can't really turn people away. You have all people who are interested can attend. There's no yeah. like gatekeeping there. So you don't know who's gonna show up, right? So you just gotta try to set the tone and hope you're... And people in those early days were so full of promise of what the internet could be, the utopian world it could build, that everybody wanted to figure it out and they all showed up. Uh, you know, 100 people one year, 200, 300, 600, you know, and it took off. And I think early days finding a home, like just resonated because before yeah. then, we were these weirdo internet people. But then since we planted our flag early, there was a stretcher as new people came along to kind of find their tribe. And if you look at DEF CON, you could be a hardware person, you could be a social engineering person. There's yes. a million little yes. communities in a community. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So speaking of gatekeeping and accessibility, something that I noticed very early in the scene was that there was still that mindset of kind of like the bravado, the I'm late and I'm not gonna share with you, you noob. RTFM. Um, and yeah. as a, I gotta be honest, yeah. as a kid, I, I really wanted to go to some of the very early DEF CONs and trying to convince my mom, you know, with the other phone freaks I hung out with and, and pound 2600 and stuff, and yeah. obviously couldn't go as, as like a, a 13 year old. Right. But now you do see 13 year olds on the floor. Yes. And you walk the conference and you see how accessible it is and how there are so many games and contests and villages yeah. that are like, hey, try this lock pick out or try you know all of these yeah. different things out. Has that been part of the fabric and was that part of the foundation of starting think, DEF CON going to your statement about how they were all previously invite only? Yeah. Right. I think a couple things happened. It became more accessible, less secretive when we started doing it publicly. And then later on, when the search Alta Vista and then Google and then Amazon, all of a sudden you could search on security. And so the amount of time you would spend as a hacker trying to figure out the secret was reduced because you could find it faster and you had more time to actually do the thing. Well, when I was young, we were young, like half my time was trying to figure out who knew the answer yes. and convince them to tell me the answer. 
when that shrinks to like 10%, it gives you that much more time to, so I'm a little jealous of the current generations where they can do the thing. And yeah, absolutely. I, I, yeah. yeah. And they've got frameworks, you know, <laughs> the, and, and, and uh, mentors. mentors, yeah. <laughs> So. Mentors are so important in this industry and being able to get into, you know, hacker education, hacker research. One of the things I've noticed through the weekend interviewing with tons of different villages, which by the way, thank you for that opportunity, is how welcoming each of the villages is. Every single one that I talk to mentioned that even if you come in there and you've never done blue teaming, you've never done lock picking, whatever it might be, you can go in there and find somebody that you can talk to. Yeah, they're so excited to find other people like them. <laughs> yeah. So I think the uh, the other difference is we really started about ten years ago or nine years ago. We really started to double down on is DefCon a hacker because what was in the early days everything was a hacking conference. But then Infosec grew yep. careers. We got jobs. All these fantastic opportunities. We could do this as a job, not a hobby. But naturally, then all the cons started to look like Infosec cons. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because. Who's the sponsor? The product manufacturer, right? And so it just naturally had that gravity. But because we existed before there were sponsors or whatever, we had to figure out how to make a con that worked with none of that. And then later on, as the industry grew up, we didn't need to take the sponsor money because we'd already figured it out. So we fortunately had charted this path where we could stay more hacker, where less people could influence right. us. Well, now here we are 30 years later, and it's like, What's the difference between hacker and infosec? And we think about it every year, but it's, I really think it's sort of joy of discovery, like spontaneous sort of exploration. It's things that are not, like you don't necessarily get an infosec. It's not become better to some instant response tool. It's more like, oh my God, that's how satellites work? Yeah. yeah. Right, the company's not gonna pay you to go learn how the satellite works, but you've got this innate curiosity that we're trying to feed and so a friend of mine years ago said, well, I send my team to Black Hat to learn how to be better at their tool use, but I really send them to DEF CON to learn how to think. Yeah. No, and I, I think that summarized like mindset versus... Yeah, hacking is a way of thinking for sure. Uh, what I'm, I'm really curious about is how as, the, as our scene has matured into an industry, as hacking has become, you know, uh, evolved into InfoSec, yeah. um, how, how do we preserve the origins of InfoSec? I know that archive.org does good work. I know that text files, in fact, right. I even have text files from the BBS scene that right. I wrote, uh, preserved <laughs> sadly, poorly. Um, what what uh, can we do as a community to ensure that as it continues to evolve, right. that the essence of uh, uh, the seeds that planted originally to, to start this stick around? I, you know, it's a really good question because we're terrible at preserving our own history. Mm -hmm. And um, I noticed this on the hacking conference world, so yeah. I started a project called uh, infocon.org and went and found every hacking conference I could find and preserved the videos, and we, I keep updating it. Um, I know there's been a few books blowing up the phone, right, trying to, or exploding the phone, I think it yeah. is. Good freak one. Yeah, I'm freaking, but there's not that many good books on the history. And I've heard that there's two or three that people are trying to write before they get too old and forget all the stories. So I really hope some of the old timers write that. I would love to contribute to any anything anybody's writing out there if you want to talk to somebody about our early days. But if we don't do that, right, it'll be lost. Yeah. Um, it's just so fun watching Hacker Jeopardy when they ask, like, this happened 30 years ago, and people. They either get it or they're completely lost. Yeah. And so. And then you've got all of us going, oh my God, that was 30 years ago. And oh, you're like, oh, oh, what? Oh. what happened? Terminator 2, 30 years ago. Oh. No. Yeah. Oh. Going into DEF CON 30, it's, for me, even coming back here after three years, it's a bit overwhelming. Do you feel like hack, uh, DEF CON as, in general has changed a whole lot, even oh, yeah. given the past three years. Oh, definitely. Yeah, and I think it was, you know how in your own personal development there's different stages and you look Whoa. back and you go, oh, that's when my perspective changed. Yeah. Around DEF CON 3, 
people were coming up and telling me things that happened at the pond that I didn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, it's bigger than I am. Yes, that's a... Like, oh, wow. so Describe that like, feeling to me. Because <laughs> I, I might know a little... I'm starting to know a little bit about the it's gotten bigger than me. What does that feel like yeah, to you? Yeah, so then you're like, oh my gosh, that sucks. I'm not going to... Like, I put in all this energy and I don't get to learn... And then you're like... But it's kind of like, it's bigger than me now. Yeah. It's it's larger than me, and people are having all these experiences, and I don't have to be there to partake with them. When you they, noticed that, did you feel like you were giving up your baby? It was. <laughs> yeah. And it took me a couple years to really, because at first I was like, tell me everything that I missed. <laughs> and then after a while, you're like, you know, I'm okay. I don't, there's too much going on. Yeah. And then when you hear those stories secondhand, you're like, that's awesome. You know, that. People really did that in the shower, you know? <laughs> okay then. Wait, what? Uh, yeah. I haven't heard that story. And hopefully nothing involving quick set cement. <laughs> no, no, we did have some uh, cement in the toilet one year. <gasps> Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, in fact, I really appreciate coming down the escalators this year. You see the big old placard for the Alexis Park. Yeah, oh, right. We yes. had to go. So good. We originally were going to do a giant rug, and we figured somebody would roll it up and walk off with it. So they we probably made it would, a yeah. decal on the floor. I've <laughs> seen people steal sofas from some of the sweet parties. Yeah, yeah that, that well, happens. <laughs> I really wanted to do this year a closing ceremony like a confetti cannon, but then you have to pay to clean it up. Oh, so yeah. So I was trying to figure out how to make each piece of confetti collectible so the people would take it with them. <laughs> Wait, so can we spoil it? Is that actually happening? No, but I wish we could have. <laughs> yeah. Maybe next year. So if I ever do a confetti cannon, I'm going to make each piece collectible so the attendees will clean it up. Yeah, it really has gotten so much larger. I haven't come to, you know, at least the last 10 years. And um, what are the kind of thought processes that, would, that go uh, in your mind when you're thinking about like as the attendance rises mm -hmm. and keeping yeah. the cohesive nature of it because I know we've gone from small little hotels to slightly yeah. larger hotels to multiple hotels. And now we yeah. have a whole convention, convention center. That's crazy. So I think what's going on is DEF CON is always a reflection of the community because we can't force the community, right? We can mm -hmm. just sort of steer the super tanker or kind of try to direct the orchestra, but really they're doing what they want to do. So we try to set the tone, we try to set the example. We did this with our code of conduct. Yes. We did this with our transparency Thank rate. you for that. First yes. conference to do a transparency report. And so the, the thinking there is we first create our code of conduct to create standards, and then we report, are we following them with the to try to force us to follow our rules. And then hopefully other people like that, they imitate us, and yeah. then hopefully other people are helped. So every once in a while we do things to try to elevate the community or yeah. provide some direction. You know, I don't say it's, what do they call it? Something signaling, uh, virtue signaling. No, but I really don't either. Absolutely not. I, in, in fact, I'm glad you mentioned code of conduct policies because I, I feel like a lot of other hacker conventions look to DEF CON to figure out what they should do in the future. And when you created that policy, many others created their own COCs. Right, it was okay for them to follow. It was okay, right? yeah. It was more comfortable for them. It became our standard operating it was procedure a standard. to ask for that for when we would sponsor conferences. It was oh, like making a new excellent. protocol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, when we wrote that, we had an eye for other people hopefully copying. Yeah. But so, when you're, when you're being kind of pulled wherever, which way the community is going, people will lament, oh, it's not like it used to be, it's yeah. changed. It's like, yes, look around you. Look at the diversity. Look at how the workplace has changed. It's not just network engineers anymore. Right. Technology is in every industry, so therefore, people from every fucking industry is going to be here. Sorry, but it's almost <laughs> like you're a victim of your success. Yeah. You wanted people to understand what you're doing. It's true. And now they all do, and so now they're all here. Yeah. So S straight up, I used to work in restaurants. I graduated in hospitality administration, so yeah. I could run a convention, but I didn't know a thing about hacking before I came to DEF CON and started working with Hack5. Unlike uh, the Dark Tangent, who obviously, uh, you know, aspired to create the nation's largest hacker conference. Yes, of conference, course. Uh, from, from day one. <laughs> that no, was the plan. Like, like, do you want to, uh, other than the, the birthday story, do you want to like give us kind of uh, the, the, the little nugget of, of how this came to be for you? Well, so originally, like you, right, I was a phone freak, and then later a little bit of a hacker, but not a, Red boxes. Yeah, but not a great hacker. I was an okay hacker. And then... Uh, what oh, you you didn't I, get caught like Darren did? No, I never got caught. <laughs> <laughs> but I ran this bulletin board, and I was the U.S. hub for like 12 different hacking networks on FIDO network. It wasn't on FIDO, but FIDO compatible network. 
And when one of those networks was going away, Platinum Net, we were going to throw a going away party. But all the, he was a Canadian network, but all the users were mostly in America. So he's like, let's throw a party, but we got to do it in America because that's where everybody is. And I said, okay, great. Well, where can we do it? Maybe Las Vegas. And then all of a sudden, his dad took a new job, he disappeared, and I've never heard from him since. But I'd already had like one foot in, I'm throwing a, so I was like, well, if we're doing this, I'm going to invite everybody, not just that network. Yeah. I'm going to invite everybody on IRC, Pound Hack, Pound Freak. That's what I was, Pound Freak. Yeah. On da oh, Downnet, Fnet? Fnet, yeah. Oh, and then, right, then it was like, <laughs> on Usenet, I was sending faxes to everybody. I mean, I was like spamming everybody that I could for free. And uh, and it just turned into this so party, great. right? And you quickly realize, like, I didn't really sign up to become a conference organizer. But you have to learn yeah. how to do it. And so I went looking for books on, well, how do you do this? There are no books on this. So you have to learn as you, you know, as you play the game. And um, and so it's like kind of a little bit like hacking. Like the way you order things yeah. optimizes the cost. The way you do ship things is, it's the same kind of puzzle mentality. Yeah, um, it's very logical. Yeah. When we yeah. first started getting into e-commerce, I look at like all of the regulations and all of the hoops that we have to jump through for EAR and everything else. and. Um, and I'm like, ooh, a complex system. Right, I, get to, I, do? I get to understand this and find the optimal way to, to approach this problem. Yep. And that's, like hacking isn't just like Unix systems. It's, right. it's a mindset and well, I love hacking logistics. And when you see, when you're paying with a credit card and they're like, oh, you got to sign and I'm like, oh yeah, they're going for the extra 0.1% discount for yep. the extra in-person <laughs> You know, like you can see their process. It's true, it's true. Yeah. And then when they don't, you're like, wow, they must be making so much money, they're not trying they to max out their, you know, visa or whatever, interchange yeah. fee. Yeah, it's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. The, um, that hacker, hacker mentality is kind of what we try to teach. And as the community has grown and there's been more people, you can't just get into a room and meet everyone. So it's been a big challenge over the years is how do you help people find their tribe? Yeah. And when the villages, the original villages were uh, Wi-Fi village and hardware hacking, but now we have 30, Seven. yeah. I mean, the conference is, uh, the, the villages make the conference. You've got yeah. the tracks, but because you put the, the, uh, uh, the, the talks online, yeah. you can actually go and enjoy the, not having the fear yeah. of missing out on the talks. It's wonderful. And then it's kind of like going to Burning Man and realizing like, yes. no, this is actually like a bunch of nerds descending on somewhere yeah. and they're making this. How does, so, how does that feel well, when so it's like delegated do, like that? Yeah, so what we do is instead of, uh, we, you know, villages and contests and events and and now we're just thinking of them as the creators. These are yeah. the people creating the content that people want to see. It might be a two-day contest, it might be a one-day village, it might be something, but they're the creative energy that, and we have about a thousand of them it takes to put on a DEF CON, right? about a thousand creators to make this and about 500 goons to help act as the oil and so it's about 1500 people to make this kind of experience and oh go ahead and so we spend a lot of time trying to figure out how do you take 20 something 30,000 people and then you're like okay hardware okay uh, hardware hacking village uh, voting machine just you can and next thing you know you're sitting down with 10 people with the same interest and you're like oh that was really cool I met some oh okay uh, locks high security locks uh, you know, next now you're at a table with those people. And we just spend a lot of time giving off ramps, so even though there's a huge mass, how can you find your people? Yeah. And we think about that a lot. It might not be visible to anybody, but that's our secret social engineering strategy. Yeah. So Jeff, as the guy behind the convention, what is one tip that you would give to somebody who's coming from a completely different background and yeah. wants to go to DEF CON just to see what it's like? Yeah, the number one thing, if you go up to somebody and say, I don't understand what this is, can you explain it to me? And people are so excited that you yes, care about yes. the thing that they care about, and they just want to share their passion with you. And as long as you're thankful and you're like, you know, open, and they'll they'll fucking talk to you all day. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. So, it's true. Now that we're on DEF CON 30, I feel like it's it's so exciting. It's so good to be back. And congratulations on 30 years going, 30 years going strong too. Yeah. Where do you want to see DEF CON going from here? I feel like there's just onwards and upwards. Also, by the way, yeah. Caesar's Forum should have asked you before building this place about adding on a second floor when so we, that we have twice as many no, ballrooms. <laughs> when we signed the, when we were about to sign, signed the agreement to move here from Paris Valleys, yeah. they showed us the plans 
It originally had two floors. Really? It was originally designed to have two floors. I freaking knew it. They should have done it. It was. And then, remember, they've been bought so many times. They're yeah. in the process of being bought by yeah. another group. Yeah, yeah. And they tried to shave all their costs, and they decided, oh, one floor. Man. Well, now, they kind of wish they had two floors. Do you ever feel like we're going to end uh, up at the LVCC? Uh, no, I don't want to go there. <laughs> Please, don't do no, not. No, no, but there are other... CES is there. It's terrible. No, <laughs> but also the thing about that is... There are places that are bigger, but we need air walls. Yes. We need to divide, and those giant yeah, convention centers have no air walls. Yeah. So you could literally go broke trying to put those spacer walls in. So we are stuck in only a certain time. Yeah. So true. So does that mean that uh, as DEF CON grows, it hits a capacity, or what, what do, do you think? We does that at, keep you up at night thinking yeah. at some point that it has to be fragmented? Not. Not well, like to say it's not already with all your DC insert area code here, NPA yeah. here. Yeah, so we have the Flamingo, we have the Link, mm -hmm. and Harris, and so we try to localize things like all the workshops are at one location. So I could see if we really had to keep growing, we'd add another property. Yeah. You know, um, I would hate to have people walk across the street to Caesars, but if you did go to Caesars Palace, that's another giant place. Yeah. Right? So I think Vegas can provide. I just don't want people to walk any more than they have to. <laughs> and I really love this uh, street of food behind here. Right? You can <laughs> yeah, go out here and have too. an In-N-Out burger and it it's feels great. like home. What's your uh, step count <laughs> for the weekend? Yeah, well, funny you mentioned that. I turn off all the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on my Wait, phone. Wait, why would oh. you do that, Jeff? Don't turn off the Wi-Fi. I think it's something like some Bluetooth ducky and a Wi-Fi <laughs> ducky rabbit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We have all the animals. Squirrel we have coconut. a zoo. Squirrel coconut watch. Have you heard about the zoo? We have a petting zoo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when can we bring all the animals for the petting zoo, Jeff? <laughs> yeah, so instead, I won't know. I'll turn on my phone and everything. I'll sync it and I'll be like, oh, that's what I did over there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if any, if it's anything like me, it's, yeah, yeah. Sorry. It, it's probably about 10 miles. Yeah, per day. Yeah, it's So when do you start crazy. planning for DEF CON 30 Wonderful? 30, about, uh, <laughs> about a month. Yeah. About a Ooh. month actually. And then around the first of the year, we start announcing all our call. And then it really starts picking up around February. But for us in the back end, about a month from now. For the rest of the community, probably six months from now. So I, I really got to know, where do you go in September to recharge? <laughs> um, well, after this, I'm going to Singapore. Ooh. Right. Yeah, so that'll be nice. I hope it's on vacation and not work. No, no, I've been living there. I got trapped there for COVID. And so now the family's there. Oh, nice. So cool. Go Yay, home. you're going home. Yeah, which is weird, though, which is it's on the equator. Yeah. So you wear the same clothes every day. The sun sets and rises about the same time every day. Like, nothing changes. Oh, and it's also like a cyberpunk novella at night. It's yeah. crazy. All the light and everything. And so then I come back here, and I'm like, I'm the northwest of Seattle, where I'm from. And it's like, I can wear a jacket. <laughs> oh, I have got clothing options. And so... That sameness there, and then you come back and you're like, you have all this variety. It's just, um, one other thing I want to mention about 30 this year is that, I, and I don't know about you guys, but I thought I kind of had it under control emotionally. And, you know, we had DEF CON 29 yep. last year, and that was pretty good. felt really good to see everybody last year. But I was on the escalator coming down, and I saw everybody. And I saw how much energy and how much positivity... And all of a sudden, it felt like this invisible weight was lifted on my shoulders. It was a weight I didn't know I had. Yeah, yep. And then I got down, and I was around people, and I was like, oh, wow. Like, how did I survive before? You know, you just, I didn't realize that. There's like, the colors had been turned down, and I didn't realize it. Now that I've been around everybody, it's like really energizing. I don't know, maybe it's just because I've been so far away in another country, but whatever it was, it just, awesome. Yeah. Aww. Well, we are we're just honored that uh, that this is that our community is uh, still here and and that it's so strong and it's such a I great feeling. I think it's feeling. stronger than yeah. ever. Yeah. Which is no, for sure. Amazing. Every year we did DEF CON, we were like, okay, that's it. That's as many people in the world that are willing to get on an airplane and come to Las Vegas. There's more conferences than ever. Yes. There's more hacking things than ever. At some point, we max out. And even with a thousand B-sides and other events and InfoSec, still keeps growing, which yeah. just tells you there's this insatiable thirst and demand. And I'm sure like- and, and it's not just the demand for the talks in the villages. If you look around, it's the people. Yeah. That's yeah. what makes it's it for me. I'm sure you've seen it probably with your YouTube channel, like just more and more viewers. As people are just- It's really, crazy. They want to know. Yeah. When I first started on this channel, I never would have thought we would 
Like, we would have closed. You know, you're in the million. Right? We're we're yeah. almost to a million. We're um, at over eight hundred thousand. It's now. weird too because it's the longest running show on YouTube, technically. It's crazy. But uh, also still not just shy of a million subscribers. We're niche. Still, like, That's okay though. We're growth. niche. It's authentic. Million, yeah, but you're a million. I think you. I think uh, DefCon. We got our hundred thousand subscriber little award. I think we're around maybe almost two hundred. Right. I mean, you're. All right, everybody, go subscribe to DefCon, and also, yes. also, I really gotta know what again is that website? As it's like so important to oh, preserve in, our Con. culture. Yeah, infocon.org, mm. and in the in the community, this is so awesome. A guy sees infocon.org and says that's amazing, and he creates infocondb.org. Uh -huh. He takes all my data, and he created an inverse database oh, of cool. all the speakers. And their bios. And oh, so you can do a reverse lookup. That's you can so do a reverse smart. lookup, and you can say Dan Kaminsky, Black Hat 2070, and it links to the video on yes. InfoCon. And now, I mean, it's just an IMDb for hackers. Awesome. And it's like so cool. He did that for years, and we'd never met each other, and we ran into each other. And it's like, oh, I'm the InfoCon DB guy. It's like, awesome. Why are you doing that? It's like, oh, I wanted a project, and he wanted to learn all the scripting language, and he figured he could learn how to do it by doing this new project. That's a great way to do it. Because we can is the best way to, to yeah. hack. Yeah, right. So the con there's more content than ever. There's more community than ever. All you got to do is have the courage to come out. Yep. And where can people find out more if they want to join, if they want to go to DEF CON in the future? So defcon.org, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a pretty good community on Reddit. A lot of uh, supportive people. We got our DEF CON forums. Yep. Um, There's a Discord. Discord for the people who can't make it here. We really try yep. to support the community year round with the Discord. I'm not a big fan of the Discord privacy policy. Yeah. So maybe Same. in the future we'll think about maybe doing a Mastodon or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we didn't have time for 30 this year. But yeah. I'm always curious in the community what they would want to see. So. Yeah. Well, I miss IRC and Usenet, but then yeah. again. <laughs> yeah. I haven't been on use. I mean, IRC in forever, so I don't know if it's a. I just saw the meltdown of what was it, Undernet or one of them? Uh, there was the, what was uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Downnet dropped. Undernet's gone. I mean, yeah. like what, what's? Uh, oh, I'm I'm blanking on the one you're talking Not about. Yet, yeah. Uh, um, some, but they had someone's the weird, yelling at the video right now. They had the weird <laughs> takeover split. It just seemed like things aren't. We're not happy in IRC land for a while. Which is weird because I heard once there was drama on IRC. No. Oh. No, never. Oh yeah. yeah. No. Which is great that you've been able to create a conference that over 30 years has also never had that. No drama. No hotel <laughs> damage. Nothing. No yeah, hijinks. No. Nothing at all. Yeah. This this year. <laughs> that no. never happens here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure your insurance premiums are wonderful too. There's a uh, somebody who every year counterfeits the badges. <laughs> yep. And. At first, we were very upset, and then we're like, your counterfeits are so good, you should give a talk on how you create the counter, right? Teach us. Yes. This is how, it's like, this well, is I cool. melt the record in the oven to a certain temperature, <laughs> and then I peel off the thing, and that gets That's a so shiny good. reflection to make it look like a hologram. I'm like, how did you figure that out? So there's like a whole other aspect of physical security and tamper evidence that you didn't even know existed until the guy's telling you about melting the record. And it's just so cool that you can spontaneously learn that stuff. Yeah, I can't imagine any of us thought 20 years ago that there would be a car hacking village or a, a voting machine hacking <laughs> village. Hacking and, and as this so continues great. to grow for you know the next 30 years, I can't even I, like what 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 can you even imagine for DEF CON 60? I mean, I know there's going to be some weird network satellite orbital data center cloud hacking. I mean, there's just you know. Underseas probe, something or other. We're gonna be like hacking our holograms. Well, you know, as soon as we're all in this AR VR, yep. it's all gonna be about how to make prompts pop up for stuff that's not supposed to pop up. Hundred percent. You know, yeah. it's gonna be like how to create weird paths for people, so you can sort of like go through the Alice in Wonderland doorway in in AR and have an experience right next to somebody that's not having that experience. Yeah. It's gonna be. I'm really looking for the AR world. I don't really care for VR. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll be here next year with our Google Glass on, hopefully making that happen. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll bring my glass, yeah. Well, we'll <laughs> no, bring I won't, I promise. Newton. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, right? thank, thank you. you so much. Yes, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. I really appreciate you being here, and thank you for making this well, convention a thing. Thanks for having me an excuse to meet Jen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for bringing, uh, making such a place where all hackers belong. Uh, yeah. We hope to see you guys next year, if not online. Yes. We love you. Yeah. Take care. Trust okay. your Technolust. <laughs> yeah. Your Technolust. <laughs>